So I announced during my first stream, the late stream tonight, I said this on Twitter, and I said this on, you know, posted on my channels, my late stream tonight will no longer be gameplay. Instead, I'm going to watch this, okay? We're going to watch this together, and we're going to see, you know, for ourselves, oh, here it's playing now, we're going to see for ourselves if everything that's been said is true, okay? There you go. So I announced this. So now it's public that I'm doing this, okay? So I go on, I go downstairs to have dinner. My wife is pissed. She's very upset. I say, what's going on? Hopefully nothing's happening bad in the house. She says, oh no, but you know, I saw that you announced that you're going to watch that their show from this morning. Did you watch it? I said, no, I haven't seen it yet. He said, oh, I did. She was not happy. And she only watched maybe 10, 15 minutes of it. And she said she couldn't even continue. She's like, literally, it's a shooting gallery against you. Like, literally, it's just, they're just 100% reading every super chat. And everyone is a detractor, a known detractor. And they're laughing at you, and they're making fun of you the entire show. And I was like, wow, that that is shocking to me, again, because I was led to believe these guys were going to be legit, right? And apparently this is not it. This is not what it was supposed to be. You know, I was supposed to just be treated fairly. Now, fairly, you know, if you want me to be an object, objective, right? That means that you're going to listen to answers, but you're not going to do this show after. You're going to, okay, listen, you, you now you judge for yourself and maybe you ask for five, ten minutes on your show. What do you guys think? Here's what we think. Okay, moving on. It's a topic for later. He's going to be on again, right? Great. Okay. Now, that's not where it ends, ladies and gentlemen, because as I said, I was still fully intending that tonight we were going to sit here and we were going to react to this, which we still might do. But there's a new update, ladies and gentlemen. If you remember, I told you that I emailed Craig last night at 6.18 p.m. saying I had a 50-50 thought that I wanted to send him all the evidence of my innocence. All I needed to know was how often he checked his email because I want to be sure if I'm going to send this to him, he's going to check it, he's going to see it, see the evidence, and delete it right away. Right? And by the way, I already said, I know probably this won't change public opinion, but at least then you'll believe me. Right? He emails me back. Are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this? I don't think I was ready for this one when I read it. You ready for this? Here's a response I got at 5.45 p.m. today, two hours ago. I think the show went okay yesterday. We talked about it at length on today's show as a debrief. That's what he called it, a debrief. You shitting on me for two and a half hours is a debrief. Interesting. My debrief was saying, you guys did a great job interviewing me and defending you for two hours against my fans. That was my debrief. And then also apologizing to someone who I harmed in my, my past and apologizing publicly to Review Tech USA. That was my debrief from the show. Your debrief was a two and a half hour destroy Dark Side Phil show and make money on it. Okay, let's continue. I think we all left the interview mentally exhausted and feeling incredibly frustrated. At the end of the day, we want what's best for you. The things that are laid out about everything, the WWE mobile game, the bank stuff, it doesn't make sense. There's too much evidence saying it's yours, and your only evidence is you saying it's not. I'm going to address that in a second. I feel like we gave you multiple opportunities to turn this around, but you seem so dug in. Even in the face of insanely detailed evidence, you wouldn't take it. Even with Keemstar coming on, I tried to lay out similarities you feel towards him and the way people feel about you based on things they've seen online, and it was tough. Like that is, That's not even a point. It has nothing to do with anything, having Keemstar on the show. It has nothing to do with any point at all. Honestly, I'm disappointed. Like I said, we want what's best for you. We very much do. You have to help yourself. When you're ready to take that step, I'll gladly help you on your journey. You deserve to get to level two. I know you can do it. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like a neutral party? That email proves that he went into it with 100% preconceived notions of what the truth was based on talking to detractors for two weeks, right? You, I'll, I will give you full disclosure. I will give you absolutely full disclosure here because I want to be fair. After about a week of him directly talking to the detractors only, he emailed me once and he said, what would you like to see? Or excuse me, let me try that, take, try, try that again. I misspoke. What would you like me to see, right? He says, what would you like me to see before your interview? And I sent him my react to my down the rabbit hole video, all right, from last year, which really covers my, my days of Street Fighter, 
my early days as a YouTuber all the way to 2017 covers it all and I reacted to all of it and I essentially said listen I'm sorry for a lot of the wrong things I did I admit that I, they were wrong here's some real bad misconceptions about a lot of that okay so I sent him that video because I wanted to basically give him an idea of how there's been a ridiculous amount of misconceptions about me on the internet and when I address them fairly, you see how they kind of, you know, at least make sense. Not to say that I'm infallible. I may make a lot of mistakes. But at the same time, I'm changing for the better. Which they laughed at during the show yesterday, by the way. Oh, change. You're changing. Yeah. It's called human evolution. Do you not understand that someone today is not someone last year, is not someone five years ago, is not someone ten years ago? It's a constant struggle to improve yourself. And when you make a mistake, you admit you made the mistake and you move on for the better. If you keep making the same mistake a million times, that's a different thing. They laughed at me when I actually admitted, like Adam was laughing about change and everything. Ha ha ha, right? So anyway, this email, essentially what this email says to me, all right? Now keep in mind, the last email I had to him was, man, I'm glad you guys made a lot of money and I would like to actually send you the evidence of my innocence, but I need to know how often you check the email because, you know, I, I want to be sure that you're going to get it and delete it right away. Did you hear a response to that anywhere in his email? Did he even mention it? No. Do you want to know why? Because he already believes that I'm guilty. He went into the interview believing I was guilty. 100%. He had a preconceived... He talked to detractors for two weeks. Some of them who he likes, because I hate to tell you this, I really feel like he loves... Um, he absolutely loves, like, it's a Gundam, right? He loves it's a Gundam. He laughs at it's a Gundam. He thinks it's funny. He's kept, he kept mentioning it's a Gundam, all right, on the on his shows over the past couple of weeks, that it's a Gundam is a troll of Dark Side Phil. So it's obvious he watches his content and shit, right? He loves this guy. Now, why do you think that he, of all the detractors, what's the first clip that they played in the interview and then they ran out of time? It's a Gundam. He's a fanboy of them, right? So anyway, he's been talking with these guys for weeks and weeks and weeks. And all he's listened to is them. I got an honest question for Craig and the side scrollers. How many of my fans have you talked to? How many people who actually watch my content on a daily basis? How many people who like my content? Who would actually tell you why they tune into my content? Wouldn't it have been fascinating to maybe talk to someone and say, hey, why do you like Phil despite all the hate against him? Why do you believe the hate? What do you think? Right? Did they do any of that? No, they talk to every detractor. They literally talk to the the people who benefit the absolute 100% most from me being the villain. And that's all they talked to. Right? There was no evidence they ever went out and actually gave me a fair shake. At all. It was just detractor, 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 detractor. Because all the detractor questions we have to ask Phil. And then say, hey, Phil, what would you like to watch? Or, or what, what would you like us to watch? Watch the down the rabbit hole. That's it. That's not a fair take. That you have 99% information from over here, 1% information from over here. Ask me questions. I told you I can't show you the stuff, right? I'm not going to show you my bank statements or whatever. And a lot of the questions they asked me, I'm going to be honest, were completely unprofessional because they weren't prepared for the questions. Can I give you an, an example here? When they're on a show and you say, Phil, tell us about the $5,000 of business expenses a month. What $5,000 of business expenses? Well, you know, the ones that everyone knows about. Uh, everyone, what are you talking about? I want to know what, what the, what is, are you talking about from my bankruptcy? Oh, uh, yeah, is that what it is? He's like, turn to Adam, is that what it is? Yeah, it's from the, yeah, you know, I need to know. What are you talking about? Right? And and ultimately, they couldn't even answer the question. Yes, it's from the bankruptcy. Well, what from what in the bankruptcy? Is this something that's listed from my tax return? Is this something that's listed on a, a generic form that was filled out, that was read off by the judge during the bankruptcy hearing? I don't even know what you're talking about. I, you know, How can I answer a question? When I, I've heard that thrown around a million times. $5,000 a month of business expenses. I don't know. I, don't, I never saw that. I don't even know what you're talking about. When I went into a bankruptcy proceeding, I went in, okay? And what did I do? I gave them all the information they needed. My bankruptcy attorney filled it all out properly with all the data. We went in. It, it was presented to the bankruptcy people, right? Yes, that was, I guess, a public-facing form that was presented. 
And apparently somewhere in there, apparently one of the detractors say it says something about $5,000 in business expenses. Ladies and gentlemen, never ever have I spent $5,000 on just video games in one month. That's insane. I don't know where that number comes from. I'm not a bankruptcy attorney. I'm not a tax attorney. I'm not a judge who stamped my bankruptcy. That's not my job to know that where that number came from. No, I don't have $5,000 in business expenses every month. I don't know, okay? Uh, what I can tell you is it was 100% kosher according to the bankruptcy judge. Because again, because the trolls were harassing everyone involved with that bankruptcy so badly, I had to go in and I had to do, just listen to this, hours and hours and hours of work explaining away all the transactions that I did related to my business, not even related to my, like I was explaining everything to, so they would understand all of it. This is not something they have to do with anyone else. But because so many people were, were basically contacting the bankruptcy judge and saying, Phil's, Phil's a liar, Phil's a fraud, all this. I had to go through all this. It was insanely stressful. It was one of the most complicated bankruptcies probably they've ever done. All right, certainly was the only one where someone ever called in and impersonated one of my debtors. All right, certainly, okay? But the point is, you got me in the interview. The question is, explain the $5,000. Okay, what $5,000? They never even got around to explaining what they meant. So I try to say, I don't know. Is it maybe the mortgage? Is it, you know, because that, because I don't know, because my house is also where I work out of. Is it medical expenses? I don't know. Why would you ask me this question? That's a stupid question to ask someone in an interview. Like, I'm going to have the answers to this question. But th to them, that's a valid question. So I answered it, right? You know, and some of the other, again, the bank statements. I actually, the thing is with these bank statements, all right? I talked about it today on my show earlier. I'll talk about it again. You can say there's all this circumstantial evidence that says it's yours. Correct. And you can also say there's circumstantial evidence that it's not mine. Like the fact that there's all these transactions that are crazy big transactions for pets, when I have one cat, one freaking cat, not 10, not 20, not 100 dogs, I have one cat. How am I spending like $100 a week on pet supplies? What am I buying him? Golden pet fucking cat food? Like, what are you talking about, right? That's just as circumstantial to prove my, my innocence as the things that prove my guilt. I already said it didn't, and again, I explained it to them and they had like, they didn't understand what I was saying. When it comes to those mobile, apparently, not even mobile, it was iTunes transactions, right? They're saying, here's a bank account, right? And in that bank account, it's showing that there's these transactions coming out of iTunes. And I'm like, okay. And? Right? And like, the, the accusations against me from my detractors are that every day I make a bunch of money on my streams. People tip me. And that money goes into my PayPal account. And then immediately I go and I spend it all on mobile games. Well, if I did that, it would be coming out of my PayPal account, not out of my bank account. Why would I be doing transactions on money I made today on stream coming out of my bank account? My money doesn't go there. Think about how dumb it would be if I'm making all this money, it's going to my PayPal. Then I transfer the money from my PayPal to the bank account, right? And then I take the money out of the bank account. I'm losing money. When you transfer money from your PayPal to a bank account, there's all these fees involved. Why would I even do that? If that were, if, you know, it doesn't make any sense what they're saying. It logically makes no sense. But again, everything that they say that's circumstantial, correct? Circumstantial, right? Can also be countered circumstantially. Because the truth is, when Craig wrote this email and he says, we have all this evidence, there's no evidence. There is circumstantial evidence. There is no evidence without a shadow of a doubt of anything these people have said about me whatsoever. None. It doesn't exist. It's not provable because it's not true. So here's the thing. And here's where sadly this entire thing falls apart. All right. When they interviewed me yesterday, they were interviewing me from the perspective of I'm already guilty. They already believe it. And all they want to do is hit me with the question where I'm finally either going to reveal something that I didn't intend to and show that I'm guilty or else I'm just going to confess. Adam was even saying it multiple times during the show to Craig. He says, Craig, it sounds like you're trying to get him to confess. And that's actually not right. Because he was. He wanted me to confess. You could tell from where the interview was going by the end. Did you notice 
Did you really notice that during the interview, they were only harping on the 100% questions, right? That could not essentially really be like debunked without exposing myself, correct? There's easily debunkable questions that could have been asked. None of those were asked. It was all the ones that the detractors have harped on because all they've done is talk to my detractors for two weeks. That was not a fair and balanced interview that was well-researched. That was an interview that was all the tough questions right up front. Then get Keemstar in here, which tell me what that did, did absolutely nothing except gave them a popularity boost to have a big YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I'm saying? All this is just bullshit. I've had, I, you know, you have it up to a certain level and it's like, I gave them the benefit of the doubt that this was them being objective. They were not. By the time that I got on their interview yesterday, they were 100% sold that I was guilty. And this was a phishing interview to try to get me with a gotcha thing. Or, you know, got him. Got him right there. There's the evidence. Now you're guilty. Now he'll admit it publicly on our show and we'll blow up. Or to just get me to admit that I was doing it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Listen to me. It's not true. And I'm not going to admit something that's not true. There's a lot of things that I've done wrong in my life. A lot. I'm not going to admit things I haven't done. It doesn't matter how much circumstantial evidence there is. This would never, ever, ever fly anywhere legally at all because it's all bullshit. It's all circumstantial nonsense, okay? This email I got from Craig literally word for word is saying, I never trusted you, okay? And that's why he even says, I, does he even say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll give, send me the evidence. Doesn't want it. <laughs> he doesn't want the evidence, you know? He doesn't want what would have actually proven, right? That's, that's absolutely ridiculous that he's supposed to be a neutral party and he just doesn't care. He doesn't want the evidence, you know? Instead, I just, I believe everything the detractors have said, sorry. Uh, so anyway, you know, I actually did respond to him. And my response was, well, I'm broadcasting tonight on DSP Reacts. I'm directly reacting to this. Watch if you like. I figure you'd at least want to know what I have to say about it. And he says, okay, buddy, hope it's wildly successful. And I said, you know, I appreciate that, but I'd just rather be playing games or chilling with my audience than wasting time on this. But now my hands are tied. I got to do something, right? I have to address it. Twitchy says, oh, just play games then. As Adam said yesterday, you do you and fuck everyone else. Good luck. Yes, because you would like that. Because you would actually like for me to not say anything and just take the punches and you get you completely benefit out of this whole thing. That's what you would like. You like everyone to think, right, that you were the big innocent guy, you did the great job, the pat on the back, right? No. You didn't. You went into it in the completely wrong fashion. You listened to the wrong people for 2 weeks and I answered every question, gave you 5 and a half hours of my time. Who else would have done a 5 and a half hour interview for you? with your little podcast, and I'm not insulting it because I'm small too, but who in their right mind would have done a five and a half hour interview for you? And you went into it completely in the wrong manner. I thought I was being interviewed fairly. The, your, your actions directly today on your show and in this email prove you never did. You never had an intention of giving me a fair shake. A professional would have said the interview's done. Maybe we do a five, ten minute decompress session today about it. We move on. We do our Mario Kart, whatever. Maybe we'll have Phil back in the future for more. Now, oh, keep riding the money gravy train that we just got from all the detractors. That's literally what he's done. That's disgusting. What was I talking about yesterday? I was talking about something I like to call on the internet. It's called a misery broker. It's someone who literally, on, when someone has a bad day, they have a good day. They make money off of talking about other people's misery. You have literally turned the Side Scrollers podcast, which used to be the show that was supposed to be the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on planet Earth, and you turned it into the Dark Side Phil shit show where you profit from my misery. You failed. You destroyed your own show. Wow. Amazing. Because now, right now what you've got, you've got temporary popularity based on the negativity being thrown towards me. Congratulations. I hope you enjoy it. You're making a lot of money, that's for sure. Congratulations, right? I certainly haven't seen any benefit like that from this, nor was that my intention. But it sure seems that way when you're doing an entire show today and you're still rolling into the gravy train, right? So, 
you know, hey, you be you. And again, with the hilarious st st stab here, we want to get you to level two. You want to get me to level two? You want me to be like you? You want me to stoop to your level? So you want me to have someone on a show, interview them, and the next day do an entire show shitting on them for profit. That's what you want me to do. You want me to be like you. I will never be like you. That's not me. I've never done that and I never will. I don't make that shit, right? I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not Keemstar. I'm not gonna, I don't, again, why was Keemstar on the show yesterday? Pretty obvious, right? You wish you could be him. Why the hell do you think he's on the show? That guy is fucking reprehensible. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows the guy has hurt far more people than he's ever helped. And, and any moment that he pretends like he's doing something to help someone, it, it, look how he's doing it. Oh, I'm helping Wings and Boogie by paying them money to beat each other up in a boxing match. That's, that's insane. That's, you're out of your mind, right? And you want to be like that. That's who you want to be. You're telling me that's how you need to be successful. That's how the internet works. No, 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 no. That's how this low level of internet works. And the thing is, there's a monstrous amount of people who are successful doing really immoral, underhanded things on the internet. Okay? Tons. And what you essentially are telling me is that's what you think I should be and that's what you sure as hell want to be. Well, go ahead and you can be that. Leave me the fuck out of it. I want nothing to do with being that. I never do. I just want to play games, talk with my audience, have a good time, and, and have nice, chill, meaningful, good time. I said yesterday, meaningful content for my... Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, when people tell me that when they came to my show, they actually felt relaxed. They had a good time that day. They had a bad time. They come watch my content. They had a conversation with me. And, you know, they, to them, that didn't even click that I said that. Meaningful content. Yeah, meaningful. You know, like I didn't shit on someone for four hours and make them look like a villain on the internet. And then I made a bunch of money doing it because, you know, I don't care about hurting people like apparently you did today. You know, what else can I say? It's a, it's a vile business being on YouTube. And what's hilarious is something that Adam kept saying yesterday, right? Something that Adam kept saying yesterday that was very, 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 very interesting. He kept saying, dude, it's the internet. It's not real. It's the internet. It's not real. It's the internet. No, 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 no. For some people, the internet is their life. The internet is my life, dude. Like, this is my job. Six days a week, full time, I'm in this office. This is it. This is, you know, how I make my living. You think it's all jokes because you don't make your living on the internet. I do. That's, you know, no, it should not be allowed. Maybe the internet is bad. Oh, that's just how the internet is. No, the internet shouldn't be like that. The internet shouldn't be people just shitting on each other for profit. How do you not understand that we can aspire to be better? That we can aspire for something good or something better than what we have, this shit show. We don't want an endless shit show on the internet, right? I went on your show... And I decided I'm going to actually grow and reach out and do things. You decided to shit on me for a whole show afterward. Like, do you see the discrepancy there, the difference? I grew. You went, <laughs> went the opposite direction for profits. But it's fine. Because I can't make anyone be a better person. I can't make anyone, you know, have a moral compass. Sorry, I can't. All right? The, the whole funny part, and I'll, I'll end it like this. And then if you want, we'll do some reacting to actually the show here. Did anyone, literally, did anyone on that show go into it with an actual thought in their mind that I was innocent? That's the question. Because if they did, I feel like it would have went a lot differently. I do. I feel like if you actually went into it saying, hey, Phil was innocent or could be innocent, right? Then it would have been fine. That, that never happened. Never one. It, that wasn't the intention. You could tell that. You could tell that because I already had said I wasn't going to say much or anything new, right, at all. I wasn't. It was just going to be stuff that I've already talked about and reiterated because I don't have anything new to say because I'm innocent, but I can't expose myself. And then when I finally tell them, all right, I'll do it. I'm, I'm thinking of doing it. Oh, I don't want it anymore. Oh, okay. So you didn't care at to begin with. I mean, let's be honest. You didn't care to begin with or else you would, you know, there, it, there was no integrity there. All right. There was no integrity there. Huskers fan, you're already banned from DSP gaming. Now you're banned from here. Congratulations. Real winner today.